I want to start out the show by addressing what we saw on Sunday around the NFL with the different national anthem protests and gestures and an unbelievable show of unity. Uh, a galvanized NFL, to be sure. You know that I draw a hard line at politics, but this is not about politics. Regardless of your politics, my politics, I am never in favor of name-calling, insulting, any kind of venom or vitriol when you don't agree with someone or something. And I say that all the time. I mean, I am not a perfect person, not by any stretch of the imagination, but I try my very best to respect what other people say to me, what other people tell me, what other people do, and how they choose to live their lives, even if it's not the way that I would choose. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing. There's nothing wrong with being different. We are a melting pot in the United States, and that's one of the things that makes this country great. And I'm constantly doing my absolute best to see an issue from every angle, from every side. I do not take sides. I want to be inclusive, not exclusive. And so regardless of politics, the president's comments calling NFL players who protest sons of bitches, please forgive my language, that was divisive and it was insulting and it was offensive and it made me cringe because having worked in the sports business for nearly two decades, the majority of the men and women, in this case men, that I talk to, that I cover, that I spend my time watching and observing, they're good people. They're no different than you and I. They just happen to play a sport for a living. But they're husbands and fathers and sons and grandsons and concerned citizens. And yes, same as broadcasting, same as any walk of life, there are guys who are the rotten apples, who, who make poor decisions, who get in trouble. That's no different than any other walk of life. But they definitely are not, as a whole, SOBs simply because they choose to protest. Now, I have said to you over and over and over again, and I will say it again right now. This is not a secret. I don't ever change my tune on this. While I respect an athlete's right to protest when the flag is unfurled and when the national anthem plays, I do not agree with that method of protest. I would never do it. But I respect the right to do it. And I respect that around the country, people have different views, different backgrounds, different cultures, different religions, different beliefs, different passions, different values. So I dislike the national anthem protest, but I respect their right to do it. As long as the NFL doesn't shut it down, as an employer, as long as the NBA doesn't, Major League Baseball doesn't, as long as the leagues and the owners are allowing athletes to do it, they are well within their right to protest the way that they choose. And I say to you all the time as well that freedom of speech doesn't only apply to the people we agree with. (laughs) And too often in our country... We only are willing to graciously grant free speech when it's something we agree with that's being spoken. And that's just not how it works. Free speech works for everyone. However, freedom of speech is not freedom of consequences. And we saw that all over the NFL this weekend. President Trump's remarks at the Alabama rally on Friday, I believe they were, had major consequences. You know, he, he gets freedom of speech too. And again, I do I do not agree with what he said, and I think it was offensive, but he has the right to free speech too. And honestly, some of the responses from people around the country were just as disgusting, okay? So there are a lot of ways that we use our free speech that I wish that we didn't. However, 
his freedom of speech that he exercised in front of his supporters in Alabama brought consequences inside the NFL fraternity. And this is the part that was amazing to see. Again, regardless of how I feel about the national anthem protests, the NFL fraternity came together like we haven't seen before to make a statement. And it reminded me of my brother and I. And you hear these guys talk about how their teammates and the others inside the NFL are their brothers. We heard that a lot on Sunday. And I appreciate that because I have a brother. I have two, actually. But the one that I grew up closest to, man, I was bigger than him for most of the time we were growing up. I beat up on him. I was mean to him. I bullied him. I bossed him around. But if anybody else tried to do it, watch out. You don't want to mess with the big sister when she's protecting her younger brother. And that's what I felt like watching different players who had either never protested before or had never linked arms or decided to show unity in a different way. And it was it was neat, actually, to see the players stand up for one another. Now, there were different forms of expression. You know, I certainly understand the Steelers' dilemma, as well as the Titans and the Seahawks, and the Raiders, who did not want to come out of the locker room for the national anthem, but because of the timing on a nationally televised game at night, they had no choice. They would have forfeited the coin flip. Uh, that was reported on, on NBC Sports for Sunday Night Football. So I understand the dilemma of the Steelers and the Titans and the Seahawks not wanting to force their players to choose. And in this particular case, there is a microscope on all the players. Whatever they choose to do, we saw it all day on Sunday. And Mike Tomlin and these other teams, Seahawks and Titans, didn't want their players to be vilified for whatever choice they might make. So I certainly understand wanting to try to keep your locker room as unified as possible, recognizing that inside a locker room, they're all different. Backgrounds, experiences, feelings, passions, causes, cultures, beliefs, all of those things are different. And so that was their choice, to not put their players in the line of fire. However, I will say as a side note, when I saw former Army Ranger Alejandro Villanueva standing on the corner of the field just outside the tunnel with his hand over his heart singing during the national anthem, I I teared up. We know he has courage. He served three different tours in Afghanistan, but that was a pretty poignant moment. I was proud of him. I would have been proud to stand next to him, but I certainly understand why some of the players chose to stay inside and under the tunnel for the national anthem. At the same time, this choice to protest during the anthem and while our country and our flag is being honored is the divisive part. And that's what President Trump was talking about. And that's what I hear from so many of you. Like a lot of things in our country, we're split right down the middle. There are many people, not just the president, and I don't know how sincere he was being. Sometimes he just, he runs his mouth, he gets carried away. But there are many people who believe that players who won't stand for the national anthem should lose their jobs. There are a lot of people around the country that believe that. I hear it all the time. And then there's the opposite. I actually hear from some football fans who are critical of those who choose to stand. So our country is divided on this particular issue, the choice to protest during the national anthem. It's not what the athletes are protesting. It's not what they're protesting. It's how they're protesting that's divisive. And again, I know this because this is what I hear from so many of you. And because in many cases, it's the actual protest that's being debated and not the social injustice, the racial inequality that these athletes are protesting. It's how they choose to do it. But again... You can only control your action. You can't control the reaction. And so this particular choice to protest, this method of protest, 
is very divisive. So minus the use of the disrespectful name by the president, I know many of American citizens, many American citizens feel the exact same way. And just as many don't. We've got around this mountain how many times in the last year and a half about national anthem protests? This was different. I talked to multiple people inside the NFL, players. I talked to multiple athletes. And what I was told is this, this is not so much about the protest today. It's about coming together. It's about the NFL making a statement and showing unity after what was heard from the president. So at least on this Sunday, it wasn't about the social injustice, the racial inequality. It was about coming together. And I think that's something everybody can applaud, regardless of whether or not you agree. And that's the point that I hope someday we get to. It's my pipe dream. I know it. I hope someday we get to the point where we recognize it's okay to disagree, but yet we do it respectfully. That's as American as it gets, right? That we get to express ourselves and choose our own path in life. Let me just tell you, there are a lot of places in this world where that is not the case. And so I still believe that we're blessed as Americans. And I come back to the the couple rules that I try to live my life by. Love your neighbor as yourself and treat others the way you want to be treated. Unfortunately, when it comes to this issue, a lot of times the emotions take over and people kind of lose their heads. But I thought it was amazing to see so many athletes come together for a common cause and a common statement. Again, even though I really don't like the national anthem protest. I think that particular method is, in my opinion, still disrespectful to our country. But I respect the guys who choose to make a statement because that's their right. Just like it's my right to not to not appreciate it, to not to not like it. So respectful <laughs> that's the word that I feel like in many cases this weekend was was not emphasized enough, starting with our president, on down the line, ripple effect. But in the end, to see what NFL players did and how they came together across their differences and across their across their different boundaries, all of that was amazing. Regardless of whether or not I agree with when they protest, how they protest, to get that many people together is powerful. So I don't think we're going to take a lot of calls about it. Again, we've been around this mountain a a million ways to Sunday. There's not a whole lot that's new that can be said. And I've already told you, I do not talk politics on the show. This is not a political statement. It's about the football side of things. So you can send me tweets if you like. Believe you me. I finally had to stop tweeting about it on Sunday morning because I had to focus on football. I was not focusing on games. I was focusing on this particular conversation. So you can go back and you can read my tweets to be sure. that That's awesome. I'd be happy if you did. Just a friendly reminder. If you call me names, you use vulgar language. That might be your right, but it's my right to block you too. So if you want to have a conversation, let's do it respectfully.